Electric vehicles have a problem. It's not price or styling, and it's not necessarily performance. What's really keeping EV drivers on the edge of their seats is range anxiety, the fear of running out of juice. A problem so big, the $8 billion charging industry is struggling to keep up. But a new technology called dynamic charging could change the entire charging dynamic. So how does it work? And what does dynamic charging mean for widespread EV adoption? I'm Akiko Fujita, and this is what's next for EV charging. Logan, Utah is at the center of a push to electrify America's roads. 90 minutes north of Salt Lake City, this tiny strip of land is testing what some have described as the holy grail for electric vehicles. We just came onto the track now. Now it's starting to charge from the coils in the ground, hitting with the receiver on the semi underneath. This truck is pulling power wirelessly through coils that are underneath this road. So you can charge as you drive. The technology hasn't been deployed publicly in the U.S., but it could be the future of EV charging. It's called dynamic charging. These squares developed by Israeli startup Electrion quite literally transforms roads into charging pads. The copper coils connected to the power grid are at the heart of Electrion's system. They communicate wirelessly through these receivers installed under the vehicle. These allow us to uh, directly feed into the battery and charge the vehicles. Would these batteries be smaller if it can charge more constantly? Absolutely, because right now you need a lot of batteries because we have range anxiety otherwise. If we constantly are charging, you don't need big batteries. It's a potential breakthrough for a market poised to quadruple by the end of this decade, according to PwC. EV chargers are expected to grow to a $30 billion industry by 2030. Assuming that market can achieve 50% EV penetration, this market will be upward of like $40 billion. Electrion's technology is all operated remotely through its software and servers. That means it can dial down the charge when and where the power grid is stretched and dial up the power when usage is at its lowest. How does dynamic charging lessen the load on the power grid. For the utility, what this means is they can have a flexible managed load as it's moving from one substation to the next substation. As a vehicle has a small battery on board, it doesn't really matter whether it charges in this mile or the next mile, but that could mean everything to the utility. The average EV can travel up to 300 miles on a single charge. In 2023, Electrion quadrupled that range on this test track by rigging an SUV with dynamic charging. They've already signed a partnership with Toyota to integrate the technology into new cars. The potential to charge on the go is a big deal, especially in a city like Los Angeles, the most electrified in America. Nearly a quarter of the cars are EVs here. There are roughly 15,000 public chargers for 1.6 million electric vehicles in all of the state of California. And as an EV driver myself, I've learned it's tough to find a reliable charge when you need it most. Chargers are expensive, they're often slow, and they're hard to come by, especially for a majority of Americans who don't live in single family homes. Why are chargers so unreliable? Why do I have to go to five, yeah. six locations to just get a charge? It is very, very capital intensive. So for example, a 350 kilowatt charger can cost upwards of $250,000 and there is an installation cost as well. So economics are very, very challenging. Dynamic charging could help alleviate some of that demand, but it comes at a cost. $1.2 million per mile, to be exact. That could mean roughly $800 million just to install the coils on Los Angeles freeways. It's a cost that some countries are already shelling out. Sweden, Italy, Germany, and Israel are utilizing Electrion's technology. The U.S. is expected to be next in line with this road in Detroit. It'll be used to power shuttle buses with Electrion's technology. 
Those coils will be under the road on either side. So as that shuttle drives down this street from corner to corner, it will be charging as it drives. Detroit is expanding its investment with plans to add dynamic charging to a three quarter mile stretch of Michigan Avenue in 2024. It's a big bet on the future of electric cars in the birthplace of American cars, with one of the big three, Ford, a partner in the pilot project. Congress is also betting on the technology with a bill to help fund future in-road charging projects. Dynamic charging isn't meant to replace chargers, but complement them. The technology will lead to smaller batteries, which could ultimately lower the costs of electric vehicles. It could also help utilities manage the power demands that come with electrification and ultimately eliminate range anxiety altogether. But there is a long road between exciting potential and mass adoption with plenty of challenges. If dynamic charging continues to gain traction though, the promise of a seamless EV experience could finally be within reach. Well, new developments such as dynamic charging already underway for EVs is opening a new avenue for the transition to electrification. So how should investors look at the future of powering electric vehicles? Here to discuss is Stacey Noble at ICF Transportation Electrification Vice President, along with Craig Irwin, Roth Capital Partner Senior Research Analyst. Um, Stacey, I'm going to start with you because I know you have been looking at the challenges of the EV infrastructure for some time. As you look at a technology like dynamic charging, where does it fit into the overall infrastructure? No, it's a great question. And and like you said in the opening, the prospect of wireless charging, of dynamic charging is extremely exciting. And one of the many innovations we're seeing out of the transportation electrification industry. And as far as it fits in, I, I would predict that the fleet applications are more likely to be the first movers toward the dynamic charging option. We saw a lot of shuttle buses, certainly some bigger vehicles as well. Um, so the, uh, the opportunity for dynamic charging to serve those vehicles that are often, you know, using the most electric miles potentially is, is pretty exciting and what we're likely to see move first. Craig, you obviously look at uh, this from an investment standpoint. You're looking at the EV side of things. You're looking at the charging companies as well. Um, why has it been so difficult to get this infrastructure going? And who do you think is best positioned right now? Wow. So um, infrastructure overall is actually starting to go reasonably well, right? There, There is still um, real cause for range anxiety. If you need to drive from A to B and you get to a charge station, it's down. It's never fun. Had the, that experience far too many times. Um, inductive charging as a technology actually um, is already working pretty well out there in the world. Um, the one uh, municipal fleet uh, uh, um, operator, Antelope Valley, also based in Los Angeles, um, you know, has a fully uh, electrified fleet of municipal buses. They run, you know, using both um, legacy uh, cable charging as well as inductive charging on many of their longest routes. So it does work. Um, it is more expensive. Um, it is a little bit more difficult to implement, but there are a number of startups here uh, that are working. And, um, you know, it takes, it takes a lot of interest and a lot of innovation uh, across the spectrum of solutions. You know, don't think that these larger companies are not looking at this. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if maybe some of the uh, some of these companies were already uh, pretty well invested here. Yeah, Craig, you know, I, I've learned throughout the story in reporting this that this is a technology that could potentially really expand um, adoption. But at the same time, it, it's still in its infancy in terms of coming to market. So if you think about where things stand right now, is it really about DC fast charging that could really supercharge this move towards electrification? And if that's the case, what are those charging companies that are out there that you think really offer value in trying to expand the market? Well, you know, DC fast charging is just one piece of the market right now. Uh, the piece of the market uh, that seems to be working better is really level two. Um, DC fast charging has about $5 billion in federal funding from the infrastructure bill. It's slowly, very slowly finding its way into the market. Um, and that's maybe even having a little bit of a detrimental impact on short term uh, volumes. So, you know, longer term, this is the solution. If you want to drive from L.A. to New York, you got to do it with fast chargers. Um, the biggest companies there are obviously ABB, 
um, and, um, and 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 tritium, I would say, are, are probably the the two that that investors can play with. You know, there there are a number of other private ones in there, um, and then you know, the operators like Electrify America, you know, are are also very interesting because they they provide a practical solution. EVgo as well, a leader there that's doing very well um, with DC fast charging for um, consumer vehicles predominantly. Stacey, so much of the research that ICF does is really looking ahead to, to where this landscape could look like 10 years, 20 years down the line, specifically on charging. What does that breakdown look like for you? Is it going to be about home charging? Is it about fast charging? Is it about technology like dynamic charging? H how do you see that breaking down? All, all of the things. <laughs> it really is an ecosystem approach for this. You think about where people keep their their vehicles, where they need to travel to. We have to have charging solutions at each of those locations as well as along the way. And it's not just about putting the chargers in the ground and having them available. It's, as we've said, they need to be reliably available. And that's a workforce development issue um, to be able to support not only the installation of the charging stations, but keeping them running, keeping the sites safe, lit, um, available. And, and, you know, again, we, as EV drivers, they need to have a similar experience as internal combustion engine drivers to be able to pull in and, and know that they can get a full tank, whether it's through gas or electricity. Um, but again, it needs to be kind of an all, or, all of the above solution and not just passenger vehicles, but as we've mentioned, the, the, the fleet applications as well. That's really um, significant promise looking ahead in terms of electrified miles. So having fleet depot charging, but also not all of these fleets return to base at the end of the day. So they need the same reliability along their routes as we do as, as passenger vehicle drivers. Uh, Craig, Tesla, the big name, of course, uh, competing in the EV space. We have seen a big move towards the standardization of the charging network with Tesla being the one that so many car makers have adopted, except for a select few. In terms of the charging network of the future, though, where does Tesla stand in all of that? Right now, we think of them as a car maker behind EVs with a very reliable charging system in place. But what are the opportunities you think Tesla can go for beyond just their current network? So, so what is missed on this whole Tesla NACS uh, um, expansion and then Tesla opening up the network to other to other vendors. Think about how annoyed someone that's going to buy a Tesla that goes to a Tesla supercharger station is going to be when they have a Hummer and a Leaf and all sorts of other vehicles online in front of them. That's number one, brand impact. Number two, if you're buying that Hummer or you're buying, you know, uh, the, the Chevy Lightning or whatever, right? If you're buying one of these other vehicles that many people find pretty compelling, uh, you're going to pay quite a lot more for electricity at a Tesla network than you would, you know, at another one of the independent networks or particularly more than a Tesla driver. So, you know, Tesla's going to have its place. Tesla is not everything. I think there's going to be a vibrant ecosystem of successful companies playing here. Um, and, you know, it's going to, there's going to be some regional winners. There's going to be some international winners, you know, many in between. Some will be focused on selling electrons. Others will be selling hardware. Um, you know, it's, it's a broad-based solution and EVs are inevitable. It's not just Tesla that's going to win. Roth Capital's Craig Irwin, along with ICF's Stacey Noblet. Good to talk to both of you today. Really appreciate the time. Thank you very much.